I always had massive respect for Islam and I'm very careful what I say because I don't want to offend any other religions because I think that anybody who is living true to God and they believe is the correct religion is somebody who I respect, but I feel like it's the last true religion on earth. In the West, at least, if you look at Christianity, it has no meaning anymore. I don't know how you can be a true person of religious conviction and faith and then call yourself a Christian without feeling, not embarrassed, but at least angered. If you don't stand for something, then you don't believe in anything. If you don't have hard barriers, if you're not prepared to say no to certain things and certain ideas, then you don't believe in anything. Islam is simple. Book says no, haram. Next. Yeah. That's it. Haram Christian Yeah, and Christianity is, is super subjective now. And there are things that everybody knows go against Christian teachings, and they know go against the Bible, but the church and the culture of Christianity, when we were talking about culture earlier, proves how important it is, is so accepting of everything that they have no firm barriers and they don't believe in anything anymore. And if you, the point of a religion is to have restrictions. That's where the faith comes in. If you can do whatever you want, then it's not a religion, is it? Yeah. And if you'll ignore all the rules of your own holy book, then it's not a religion either. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like the fact even that Christianity is so openly mocked and Christians don't stand up and defend it is again, proof that the religion has lost a lot of its power. And I think my respect for Islam is in the very simple fact that they stick up for what they believe in and they mean what they say and they refuse to be mocked. And I don't know, you can apply that from a religious perspective, but you can sure. also apply that from a general perspective of life as a man. I think any man with self-respect doesn't want to be mocked and he doesn't want his views to be mocked about anything. And if you're going to believe in a religion, you should at least respect it. And I respect their rigidity. Mm -hmm. And I respect that people treat them in a certain way because their religious convictions are true. We can go down the argument of which religion is true, which religion is right, but I think we could all agree, and even Christians will agree this with me, that it's a sad state of affairs where Christians will allow their prophet or Jesus to be openly mocked and they won't say anything about it or do anything about it and just allow it to happen within Christian nations. I think we can all agree that's sad. And it's beautiful to be part of a religion where you don't have to suffer that embarrassment, truthfully. How did Islam change you personally? Because I'm sure there's been an internal shift, right? Not just the religion, but it gave you. me it gave me a lot of clarity and it gave me a lot of peace and it confirmed a lot of things I already knew were right and already knew were wrong. Reverting to Islam didn't make me say, ah, okay, this is now wrong and I used to believe it's right. There wasn't very many of those. Mm -hmm. It was far more, I always knew this was wrong. Mm -hmm. And now I'm glad I get to read the Quran and be told a new reason why it is wrong. And it gave me a lot of peace. You have to live for something and everybody's trying to live for something outside of God. And truthfully, you're gonna to get to a point in your life sooner or later where you realize nothing else matters. And you're gonna to come to a conclusion, especially if you're monumentally successful, that all the things you think you own, you don't even own. And that you don't have control or power over very much. And the only thing that's gonna give you true satisfaction in this world is waking up and knowing that you're doing the right thing because it's what you believe is right. And you have the faith and the courage to continue to do that despite your persecution. Ultimately, if what you are doing is trying to take care of your children and preserve society so they have a world to grow up in which is worth living in, that is the, the will of God and the act of God. And I think that having peace and clarity in regards to knowing I'm living for the right thing was the biggest change. I wouldn't say it changed many of my views. Mm -hmm. It just made me feel more at peace with the suffering that comes with doing the right thing. So why do you use the language of revert to Islam versus con convert to Islam? Yeah, I, I was corrected on this and someone said to me that we were- Andrew Tate was corrected? Yeah, I've been, bro, <laughs> my, whole life, no my, whole life, my whole life has been corrections. I just, I'm just good at listening, you know, I just mm -hmm. pay attention. But we all start off as Muslims is the intention, right? I, you can probably explain it even better than I can. And, and especially when it comes to the Islamic journey, I'm paying a lot of attention and I'm learning as much as possible because there's a lot to learn, especially when you're not bored into the faith. Right. There's certainly a lot of studying to be done. But it's interesting when you said Andrew Tate was corrected. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd like to believe the only reason I'm so good at trying to make people understand what I think and teach people things is because I was such a good student for so long. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my life listening. One of the weirdest things about the internet is I see all these 21, 22, 23 year old kids talking about how life should work. and you They have know, it all figured out. Yeah, they all figured out. They're in Miami and they've rented a Lambo and by the, the by the course for 997. King of the world. <laughs> I spent my 20s shutting up and doing as I was told. I only became a world champion kickboxer because I listened to my coach. I only became wise because I listened to my father. I spent most of my life listening before I started to talk. The internet's kind of accelerated it now where people are getting a voice much earlier on. 
But before the internet, you didn't get rich at 21 unless you were born rich. How? Yeah. And, and you didn't have a voice at 21 because no one would listen to you. You know, so right. you had to have that age to have the real world successes and the wisdom. And with that age, you often learned the life lessons that allowed you to teach people things. But I've been, I've been a very good student for a very long time and I like to pay attention to things and I'm constantly being corrected all of the time. And now especially, you can call it God, you can call it universe, you can call it life. There's lots of different things you can call it, but the feedback I'm receiving every single day, I'm trying to pay a lot of attention to. And we can even apply it to other things, right? So I understand that I was joking when I said some of the videos that when I made some of the videos I've made that have been used against me now by the people who are saying I'm a misogynist when I'm not a misogynist. Everyone with a brain knows I was joking, that's true. But I would be a fool to not sit and say, okay, well now I'm monumentally more famous. I have to be slightly more careful how I say certain things in case they're weaponized. Right. You have to take feedback from things in life and use it to your advantage all of the time. Right. So I'm, tr I'm constantly and always trying to do that. Jail was a fantastic example of it, but I one of the things I like most, and I won't say their names, but there's a few very prominent Muslims who I'm speaking to every day and learning from them. And the lessons in it are so important and so pertinent. And the only reason I believe I'm going to get where I want to get is because I'm a good student and I'm prepared to listen and learn. And there's a lot of people in the world who aren't prepared to listen and learn. And I find that quite interesting. And I don't think it's because people are stupid. I think the majority of people are actually brutally arrogant. Because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people ask for my advice on different things as well. And when I try and give it to them, they just start arguing with me back. I don't know if you've ever had that. Someone comes to me and say, I want to be successful, I want to be rich. I'm like, okay, you need to do this. Oh, but I can't do that because of, why did you ask me that? Yeah. Why did you ask me if you have all the answers? Yeah. If you have all the answers, why are you not where you want to be? Yeah. There are three reasons most people are not successful in life. It's either stupid, lazy, or arrogant. I think less than 5% of people are too stupid to get everything they want. I've yet to see anybody truly dedicate themselves to something in life and not get it. I've never seen somebody get up at 6 a.m. every day, go to the gym every day, eat right every day, and not get in shape. Now, I've heard people say they're gonna do it and not do it, or say they're doing it and lie, or say, oh, but my thyroid, or every excuse under the sun. But I've, not, I've yet to see anybody just do it and not get the result they wanted. And it's the same with most things. It's the same with making money. Not many people are too stupid to make money. Not many people, if you were to give them the formula, the blueprint, and say, here, do exactly this, copy it, and do it word for word, would be too stupid to interpret what they must do but people are too lazy and they are too arrogant. 5% of people are too stupid. The majority of people are not where they wanna be, whether it's physical, financial, anything else, mental, spiritual, because they're too lazy or they're too arrogant. And laziness is, is, a, is a scourge, but I think arrogance is the true one, where people just truly, they want the answers, they want the shortcuts, but when you're actually trying to explain it to them, they have all the answers under the sun as to why they can't possibly do it, or it doesn't work for them, or yeah, I can't go gym at six because of traffic, and I have a thyroid problem, and that. it's all arrogance. It's all just trying to pretend they're special and different and better than everyone else, and it's, it's not the case. So what about things you do to stay zen with the heat of the pressure, you know, the world on you, the matrix after you? I've adopted all of that into my everyday life. I don't have time to sit and deliberately do something specific to keep myself grounded. What do you do for fun? I'm, I'm, I'm ready for all of it all of the time. You know, maybe Bring I've it. lost my mind. I'm ready right now for someone to walk in here and for us to all fight to the death and end up covered in blood. I'm ready also to have a nice meal, smoke a cigar, do a podcast. I'm ready to go home, make some money. <laughs> ready to go make another child with my beautiful girlfriend. Ready to drive my Ferrari or my Aston Martin or my Lamborghini. I'm ready for it all. I'm permanently ready for all states of life. It's fine. Mm. And as for fun, I'm not sure I believe in fun. Is fun a thing? Is fun real? Isn't that just made up? I'm not sure what fun is. I, I really truly enjoy purpose much more than fun. If you were to say to me, Andrew, this will be fun, or I could clear my notifications on my laptop, I'd probably choose to clear my notifications.